Well, good morning, everyone. I'm here today to, to address the 1976 coal policy and our government's decision last spring to rescind it. First, to every single Albertan that has expressed their opposition to this decision, your government has heard you. Further, I want to thank you. Thank you for being engaged and passionate. Thank you for caring about your province and its future. And thank you for speaking up and being heard. An important part of being a responsible government is to admit when you've made a mistake and to fix it. And that's what we are doing here today. First, Alberta's government will reinstate the full 1976 coal policy. This includes the four land categories that determined where and how coal leasing, exploration and development could occur. We recognize that rescinding this policy has caused tremendous fear and anxiety that Alberta's majestic eastern slopes would be forever damaged by mountaintop and open pit coal mining. Let me be clear, this will not happen in Alberta. That's why, in addition to reinstating the policy, I have issued two directives to the Alberta Energy Regulator. Number one, no mountaintop removal will be permitted and all of the restrictions under the 1976 coal categories are to apply on surface mining in category two lands. Number two, all future coal development and coal lease sales on category two lands is to be paused indefinitely, pending consultations on a new modern coal policy. On this, I need to be clear about the current situation in these category two lands. First, there are six projects that are being explored for potential development. This means that core samples are being taken, perhaps roads are being built. It does not mean that a project will be developed. And second, exploration on four of these six projects began under the 1976 policy before its rescission. That means that the 1976 coal policy did not preclude coal lease exploration and it also means that putting it back won't necessarily end exploration. Further, reinstating this policy does not affect current coal exploration and mining on any other categories of land. I will provide details on what the new coal policy consultation process will look like in the weeks ahead. However, I do want to provide some context around our decision in the spring to rescind it. First, we felt that a number of, of its provisions had become outdated. For example, the policy predated what we now know about climate change, and it referred to thermal coal as being a clean source of energy. Second, we intended to manage coal on an equal footing with other mineral resources like oil and gas, we felt that this would streamline regulatory matters and provide more certainty for government and stakeholders. However, Albertans' views are clear. They expect us to manage coal differently. What we're doing today, keeping the 1976 coal policy in, in place and committing to consult on a modernized policy is what we should have done in the beginning. We didn't do it then, but we're going to do it now. As we move forward from today, I want to assure Albertans that we intend to balance stringent environmental protections and responsible resource development. This government will not allow coal developments to jeopardize the mountains, headwaters, foothills, parks, and the recreation areas that we cherish. After all, this is what makes Alberta an attractive place to live and to do business. Alberta has a rich history of responsible coal mining. It's been a, an important par part of the province and important to its citizens for decades, with many Albertans continuing to rely on the industry to put food on their families' table, tables. Metallurgical coal projects, if approved through vigorous regulatory processes, can help Alberta businesses meet increasing global demand for steel and provide good-paying jobs for hard-working Albertans. 
And given today's economic climate, that's not something that can be taken lightly. Like many that I've heard from in recent weeks, I too have roots in Southern Alberta. I'm a Southern Alberta farm girl. Those areas are part of my childhood. And when I heard from so many Albertans what this area meant to them and saw the pictures that they provided, it really hit home. I'm absolutely committed to ensuring that future generations can enjoy these lands just as I did. We will continue listening until we get this right. Thank you, and I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you, Oper thank you, Minister. Um, we have time for one question, one follow-up today. Operator, can you please put through the first caller? First question is from Hello. Emma Graney with the Globe and Mail. Go ahead, Emma. Yeah, good day, Minister. Um, quick question on the consultations. Uh, what's the timeline? What's the timeline? Well, we anticipate having a process uh, ready to, to roll out in, in the weeks ahead. The consultation will be vigorous. It will be lengthy. It will hear the input of all Albertans on all views related to coal. We want to take the time and get this right and hear Albertans and decide, uh, decide what the next steps are. But this will be a process that will take time and will be very, very open, and we will listen. And my follow-up to that is, um, why didn't you do that in the first place? Well, we should have done better, and we admit that we didn't get this one right. Uh, we were not perfect, and Albertans sure let us know that. Um, we, we could have done a better job. Um, but from our perspective, what we saw was a policy that was obsolete, written many years ago, predated our modern understanding on climate change, and what we intended to do was to change the administrative process by which the Department of Energy issues tenure, issues leases. Um, what we didn't anticipate was the unintended effect of removing the coal categories, and Albertans felt that that removed restrictions uh, that were in place. So we are listening. We've heard that. It was not our intention to do that. We're going to take the time, we're going to take a closer look at this and hear from Albertans as we move forward with a modern coal policy. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Next is Graham Thompson with iPolitics. Go ahead, Graham. Thank you very much. Uh, Minister, the, um, the Premier last week was saying that you know, the old 1976 policy was a dead letter. So I'm a little confused here. If it's a dead letter, why are you bringing it back? Well, there's there's a number of things uh, certainly in the policy that are obsolete. You know, as I mentioned, it uh, it predated climate climate change and referred to uh, thermal coal as a clean, non-polluting source of uh, electricity generation. There were other elements of the of the policy that. Uh, that uh, predated a modern regulatory process. There were other parts of the policy that uh, weren't in line with, uh, with uh, uh, trade agreements. So an, a lot in the policy was, uh, was obsolete. Um, what uh, Albertans expressed concern over is that they felt that some of the restrictions and protections that were in the categories the, the coal categories of the 1976 coal policy had been lost, and as a result, that something was had changed. Um, that was not our intention, and uh, that's why we in, are re reinstating the co policy in full. And to to assure Albertans that that we mean it, we have provided uh, two directives to the Alberta Energy Regulator to reinforce that. And we're opening consultations so we can hear the views of Albertans on what they would like to see in a modern coal policy and to hear their views on any matters in relation to coal. And as a follow-up, just wondering, uh, your colleague Jason Nixon, when he was defending the government's position on coal mining, referred to the impact, the Federal Impact Assessment Act, you know, the old uh, Bill C-69. Um, is your government still going to have to try and fight Bill C-69, if you're actually still using it, though, as a defense to protect the environment in the Rockies? Well, what we know for sure is that the modern regulatory process 
uh, is very vigorous and assures that environmental protections will be uh, will be robust. Um, there, in, in some cases, there is a joint assessment with the federal government. We are uh, we are continuing to to challenge Bill C-69 in the areas of its overreach and where it uh, intrudes into areas of provincial jurisdiction. But I can assure you that the uh, the modern regulatory uh, process and the environmental impact assessment process is rigorous, and that uh, Albertans should be be given some comfort and assurance that uh, all environmental protections will be stringent. We have time for two more questions. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Next is Robson Fletcher with CBC. Go ahead, please. Uh, hi, Minister. Um, I was wondering what impact you think this will have on the additional activity when it comes to the, the, the two projects that received exploration uh, permits after the coal policy was rescinded last June. Um, do, you, do you expect companies will continue with exploration activity that they are currently approved to do, given now the uh, uncertainty that they may have surrounding being able to get additional permits for actual mining in the future? Well, there, it's uh, the the AER directive will impact uh, future approvals. There'll be no uh, future approvals for uh, exploration activities pending the consultation. And uh, with with respect to current exploration that was approved uh, uh, before this time, and much of it approved prior to rescission of the coal policy, I think it'll be up to uh, to companies to determine how uh, how they manage their coal exploration programs. But we don't intend to uh, to uh, to remove approvals that were already granted by the regulator. And sorry, it, it, this was answered already, but I didn't quite hear it. So, if if do we, is there any type of timeline on on the consultation process? Are we talking sort of weeks, months, sometime mm -hmm. next year? When when will it sort of take place and wrap up? We're we're we'll be rolling out in the in the weeks ahead what the consultation process will look like. It won't be a short process. It will be a thorough process so that we have time to to hear from Albertans. I'm sure that we're going to hear from a lot of them on what the future of coal looks like. We want to make sure that we get it right, give an opportunity for everyone to be heard and uh, and do it right. So I don't have a time frame on what that is right now, but we'll be rolling out uh, in the weeks ahead what it will look like. And Thank operator, you. can you please put through the last caller? Final question is Bob Weber with the Canadian Press. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, hello, Minister. Um, well, given that you directed the, the AER to uh, to ban any mountaintop mining, and given that the Category 2 lands bans any surface mining, uh, I mean, how much activity do you expect to see on those lands? What does this do to the government's plans to uh, dramatically uh, expand this entry, uh, industry and generate the jobs and, and the royalties you'd hoped? Well, what we've done is uh, uh, we've put an outright ban on mountaintop mining, um, which seems to be the, the, uh, the, the pictures that are circulating out there. That will never be allowed in Alberta. The uh, coal categories in the 1976 coal policy uh, had restrictions on surface mining in Category 2 lands. They are fully restored, and it's been... Uh, been uh, uh, communicated in a, in a directive to the Alberta Energy Regulator to restore that coal policy. So um, we uh, obviously we, we want to ensure that responsible coal mining can occur in the future. There is a tremendous resource of metallurgical coal in Alberta and the world is looking for steel making coal. We want to make sure that uh, that it, it can can proceed responsibly in the future and that's what we're doing with uh, with, uh, with with this and that's what we're doing with uh, opening consultations. It's a question of balancing the uh, balancing the interests here, balancing the the views of Albertans and making sure that there is a, there is a, a clarity and a path forward uh, for investment. Have you communicated this morning's announcement to the uh, Coal Ministry of Canada or to the uh, companies that are now working in Alberta? 
We're in the process of communicating this with, with all Albertans. We're in the process of reaching out to, uh, to stakeholders. I've had an opportunity to pre-brief pre some stakeholders. And in the days ahead, we'll be uh, talking to, uh, to numerous, uh, numerous impacted uh, uh, stakeholders, including the, the coal industry. Early reaction. Pardon me? Have you had any early reaction to the uh, the pre-briefings and the discussions you've had with stakeholders? Well, we want to. Uh, what we want to do here is we want to listen to a broad group of Albertans, and we'll we'll uh, we'll certainly uh, certainly hear their views. But with respect to reinstating the coal policy, I think we had heard from a lot of Albertans, a lot of Albertans, that that's what they wanted, that's what they'd like to see, and we listened and restored those coal policies. So I think uh, um, it's, it was the right thing to do, and uh, I'm looking forward to the consultations ahead. Thank you, folks. That's all the time we have today.